Hey everyone, it's your favorite monkey and welcome to Monster Train. Yes, it is the first video of the year and I uh, am quite excited to get this started. Now, I've been talking about playing this game for quite some time on my channel and um, yeah, it's just a little something something to get things started and uh, yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy this series as much as I am. So, what is Monster Train? Well, Monster Train is all about... Um, well, you're on the train, you have the last pyre or fire of hell and hell has frozen over, ironically, and you have to go relight the fires of hell. And I think that is uh, quite a good concept of, for a game and whatnot. I think this game came out in, I think, 2018 or something, not so long ago. You can check the description down below for a link to the game on Steam. And uh, yeah, that's about the introduction of the game. So this is a card building game. It's roguelike, so each run will be different than the last. You get uh, different clans, different um creatures uh artifacts all those sorts of things as we can see it even has a dlc that is available that introduces these worms which is uh i still have to get this dlc check it out how it is but uh, i figured like you know let's, let's start with a standard run all those things um you get a couple of challenges you get your logbook uh you can check out your run history uh settings and everything is pretty much as you know it's not not something fancy it's not really like a um i'm gonna put it like a crisis game or something you know like they, you know you don't expect a lot of changes that you can make to a game um but still uh it's it's pretty fun and i have played with this game i did a couple of runs got a couple of wins few losses um yeah right let's start a game okay so we're gonna start a new run over here and uh Fight your way through hell to restore the pyre. You can unlock new content by earning XP. Right. Now, I think I have gone and unlocked a couple of the cards and things already. And um, I think after you've unlocked all the cards, then you can start getting new frames for them. So currently, I'm working on getting the cold golden frames for the cards and stuffs. And yeah, so here we go, and we can choose a primary clan and an allied clan. You play with actually two clans. The one is the Hellhorn. Uh, well, let's go through the clans, okay? So this is the Hellhorn. Um, pretty, it's a, aggressive demons. Like they, they sort of do multi strike and rely on armor and things like that. We have the Awoke, Awoken, uh, which. Primary focus on thorns and healing, if I'm not mistaken. We have the Stygian or Stygian guard, which is based on like spell damage. And there was another mechanic in it, so like spell damage and offering, I think. Then we have the Umbra. Really, one of the coolest mechanics in the game is these guys. They work on. Their, their whole stick is basically consuming. Like, they consume other creatures and what, and they get stronger, and different buffs and effects take place. Then, finally, we have the melting. Now, these guys also very interesting mechanic. They're about dying and resurrecting the whole time, like necromancers, basically. This is the necromancer of the of, of um, the game. The game we're playing? Um, Monster Train. <laughs> And not too long ago, they've introduced, like, these are the champions you play, okay? And what they've done is they've introduced a next set of heroes or champions you play with. So with the Hellhorn, you get this lady. So what she does is, if we can check out um, the Hornbreaker Prince, this is him. He's all about direct damage and dealing damage and that kind of stuff. She, on the other hand, works with imps. Which is uh, pretty interesting. We have the the sentient, and we have Weldonton. So she is all about regen and fawns. He is all about um, applying damage and card draws. Over here, we have Tethys Titan, Titan Spain. Um, also, like direct damage, but uh, it's a little bit different in a way than the uh, Hellhorn. But then we have this guy, Solgard the Martyr. Uh, he has this thing, uh, like a cube you have. Um, 
and it applies frostbite, which is uh, quite an interesting mechanic in its own. Then we have Penumbra with his many arms and morsels he summons. Then we have Primordium. And I have not really played with this guy, so I don't really know what uh, he is all about. We'll see what, what happens there. And then we have Rector Flicker uh, with his dregs, which burn out. Basically, they have a, like a timer on them. Each round, one, it like a burnout occurs. And then, like, yeah, it counts down every turn. When a burnout runs out, the unit dies. But what he can do is he can resurrect them again um, with extra. We can put it that way. We have a little fade over here. Um, very interesting, like, more of like an assassin, if we can put it that way. A lot of stealth and assassin -y type of things uh, with this dude. So, I was thinking, let's just keep it simple. Um, survive a little bit longer. We use um, the Awoken here with the Sentient. Um, and I want to say maybe let's start with the Hellhorn. Um, the Imps would be interesting, but let's keep it like plain vanilla, how the game came out, came out like how you would do a standard run and everything. We do this. Um, so we have the Awoken and the Hellhorn with the Sentient and Direct Damage. And the Covenant here is just, I'm just going to put it on Disabled. What it is, is just it makes the game a little bit harder each time, but you get more points and unlock a, cool, a couple of cool things. Uh, you need to get at least 25 wins. Like, this would be a one win, the Covenant would be a second win. You get up until 25. Um, and yeah, you can add mutators and things if you want to. I think you unlock the mutators a little bit later as you complete the game. Um, googly eyes is just really funny, but it can get annoying a little bit later <laughs> uh, down the line. But uh, yeah, I think uh, let's go ahead and depart, shall we? And see what uh, damage we can deal. And okay, so. This is the final boss, is Seraphim the Chaste. So what he does is he has Purifying Emblem, uh, remove half of the buffs and debuff effects. Um, so remove half of any buff and debuff effects, effect stacks. Okay, so yeah, not 100% sure what it means, but okay. So this is the final boss uh, we have to prepare in order to deal with this. I think... Um, will remove half of any buff. So that means if you apply some sort of buff to your characters, you will go and debuff them. And if you apply a debuff on him or his minions, then he will remove the debuff effect stats or whatever. So, and we can see in that we have the eight rings of hell or seven rings or something. Um, we are currently in limbo over here. At ring three, we will meet up with Daedalus, the professor which has the explosive sigil. Um, it's just like a fireball or something. Oh no, if a unit dies, then it will deal one damage to the frontmost unit. Uh, and then fell the Wings of Light, which has multi-strike, summoned units. Uh, they come in with rage, multi-strike. Okay, so yeah. This is what the main bosses we have to worry about, and then the final boss himself. So, yeah, let's go ahead. We're all coming in here. This is our train. This is where we are. As we can see, we can scroll down um, all the rings we have to encounter till we get to here. Uh, then we will relight the fires of hell. So I was thinking what we can do is we'll do this one, this one, this one, and then stop around here. And then I think if we click... Uh, there is somewhere we can click, I think. Uh, yeah, over here. So, the eight circles of hell. And what we can do is we can get to here. We cut the video in half. And then the second half we can get to here. If, if we get to there. Like, the game does get considerably harder every ring. So, so over here we have a dark forge. Where we upgrade our champion. And we get a random artifact. We can choose between two of them. Okay. So... Before we jump in, we can check out our deck over here. 
as we can see is the sentient no upgrades yet as a zero 10 so just a quick a couple of things um we will have like this is our power like our mana we have uh it resets every turn uh barring that there's a couple of extra modifiers that can like we can gain extra each turn or during the gameplay we can gain extras or we can lose some some of them but that depends on like like i said different modifiers um then we have these two dots on top that is the size of the unit this is a size two unit um each full i think has five space five unit space or five spaces i think <laughs> so this will consume two when we summon the sentient um as we can see here the train stewards also two so we can basically have one train to steward and one sentient on one floor um and by, like for the same other like you do get units that are one and you can get units that can up to go go up to five which is very interesting and um yeah so the sentient as we can see the damage the sentient deals is zero but has a health of 10. um the train steward can deal five damage but it can only take up until a damage the health does not regen this is where these guys come in restore like we restore two health and regen that means at the end of each turn you gain one health back and then obviously torch we deal two damage but this is a target spell so we can target anything um to deal two damage to all right so that 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 let's go ahead and upgrade our our champion first before we go to the artifact so we can see um we have explosive and cultivating these this i think there's a third option but you get two of these and i think the one you choose will always be there the, uh, this one and then the upgraded versions later you can upgrade your sentience more and more um but i think the second one you don't choose will get randomized either to this one or the third option i don't know if there's a fourth option but i know of three like there's a fawns one as well unfortunately i wanted to get to do the fawns one but looks like that's not in the cards haha <laughs> puns um so rejuvenate we deal 20 damage to the front most uh the front unit and like this is rejuvenate so basically rejuvenation is triggers when healed even at full health so this counts restore to health counts as healing so that, that we have these so it might make sense to uh go for this Cultivating is um, when it gets damaged, we draw a card. Um, and cultivate at the increase of damage and health of the friendly unit of the lowest health. But cultivated, I, I don't... I think... I don't really know what that means. We have to one stage do a run with this. But I'm going to do this so we can deal some damage. So we're going to choose that one. And then what we do, what we do, <laughs> words, words, yes. Uh, so we got two artifacts to choose from here. Um, consume is another type of thing. Um, some cards will have the word consume in it. So once you play it, it will get consumed uh, for the rest of the run um, or that floor. Uh, but so when you get to a new boss or a new area, then you will have those cards back. But once played, it will you will not be able in that floor be able to use it whatsoever um there are some things that you can remove the consume there are cards or the upgrades you can do we can add consume um but we're not really going to do the consume thing um but what this says is if a card does get consumed, there's a half a chance that it will not it will be discarded instead of being consumed discarded just goes into the discard pile once uh, your new round starts you get your discard pile back regen I think we'll be pretty good here because regen restores plus one health per stack um and we basically have this like every time a healing gets triggered we do 20 damage to the front most unit so i feel like if we do a regen i think this might trigger twice i don't know we have to see this so we're, we're doing the whole healy thing trying to skip a lot uh, um stay alive and whatnot so i think we're going to choose this one optionally you can skip to get some gold yes there's some coins gold you get in uh each i think each round and there's other things that you actually gain gold and i know the melting they actually have units that 
do you do things regarding coins you have, which is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and choose that and move to the battle. All right, so we have Evan's Priests. Uh, these disciples have dedicated themselves to the service of heaven and will attempt to restore their life uh, of their companions. Restore the life of their companions. So basically what this guy does is... Um, this is the boss, and these are the units we will encounter. I think there might be other ones, but these are the main ones, I, as I know of. So this guy, all he does is he restores health to units um, on the floor, on like his allies. This one just it has a lot of health, but only does two damage, whatnot. Um, not too hard to take care of, but we will have to see. Um, this dude, uh, the boss, the... I'm just trying to remember like really what he does, but let's we will see. I think we will Yeah. Um if we we can activate this, this is a trial, we can gain extra money out of this if we, we can choose to put it on or off. Um but what it means is like these characters, non-boss enemies, so not this dude, but these guys, they will get spikes three. And spikes is they deal takes one damage per stack. Um, so they will do three damage. If we attack them, they will take three damage. Um, as far as I understand, our sentient does not attack whatever. What she does is uh, she deals 20 damage. So I feel like it's sort of an okay-ish thing to activate this. Oh, you know what? Why not? We gain extra gold out of this. We don't really do damage with this one. We're going to, like, everything's going to depend on the sentient over here with the whole healing kind of thing. And we can take out in enemies with these like these weak guys at the back with the uh, torches. So let's go ahead and do a fight. See where this goes. Okay. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> um, there are three floors. And then our pyre. We cannot add units here. The pyre will be on its own. It does have health and 20 damage. Um, and as we can see, this is our pyre health. We have to keep this above the whole way through. Um, we can place units on any floor whatsoever and how combat works is uh, well, let's let's just begin with so we you can see the floor capacity We can go ahead and Put her down. She's gonna take do two damage. Um, it's also a thing we I'm gonna show you guys um, Combat preview. It's off by default. Make sure to put that on to see these numbers like uh, the minus two So she's gonna take two damage from this character because this one only heals so what we can do is, we can do this. Burn, it's dead, and now that this unit will not be healed. But, what we can do is, we can uh, restore, do this. Alright. And this character will now die, because we healed once, okay, the uh, 20 damage was dealt to this uh, unit over here um, and I think we just go ahead and we can put a strength to it down but there's no reason to like you know worry too much I mean yeah you know what we can do because this character is not taking any damage oh crap uh, he is going to take damage because he is going to attack I think I don't know. Um, there is a game speed over here. We can put it on normal, um, fast, ultra, and um, super ultra. The game normally starts on normal. So if I say, okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to say in turn, we don't have any mana left, so we can't play any cards. Um, this is our discard pile. This is our draw pile. So we can say in turn. And then we, in slow motion, for me, it's going to be slow motion. We'll see the battle unfold. No attack. There we go. Okay, so we have a collector over here. If we kill it, it will give us um, 50 gold. Um, but before we do that, we will get back to you. What I want to do is I want to torch you. So you don't get healed up. I want to go ahead and put a train steward down here. Do we want to though? 
I just want to leave one mana open to either put down a train store or torch this creature so that we can get the uh, gold. Um, what I can do is heal you up like that. This one will die. Um, and let's just go ahead and torch this one. Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's go ahead and do that. No attack. And he is very low health. Okay. So now we get to do things. Okay. There's not much going on. Um, what I'm going to do is just going to bring the speed up to just twice. So we can slowly, gradually going up, uh, up until we get to ultra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, basically heal him and put down a train steward here and train steward here. Okay, so we're going to end turn. Uh, so this one's going to die. So what we can do, first of all, is we're going to torch this one. Um, as we can see, we can do this. And now the boss is going to die. Because, like, what's going to happen now? This is relentless mode. These are going to attack back and forth, back and forth. Up until when one remains. Before this, it would have been the boss. But because we restored health to this one, it's going to regen health over time. And I think constantly deal damage to the boss. And it already did 20 damage. So, and I think this got rejuvenation 1 at the bottom. So it's going to do more damage over time. Um, and as we can see, still full health. Been doing all of the damage thus far. Killing most of the enemies. And uh, I mean, why the hell not? Let's go ahead and do this. And yeah, there we go. And dead. Which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and collect our spoils of war. Um, <clears throat> so we can apply spikes the sharpen uh to our sentient uh, we can still enhance is pretty good because it's a zero cost card and just outright just gives free health and three damage um this applies four damage and spikes but I, I i think spike sticks around i don't know if it decays over time but this thing is a nice little aoe explosion it restores 10 health to a friendly unit and deal damage to the front unit equal to Five times the amount healed. Which is pretty good. And you can buff this um, this up. So I'm thinking... Since we're leaning towards the healing things... I think like... Let's go ahead and do this. And I still need a golden frame for this one. So let's go ahead and do that. Now. Um, so we have... This is now the allied clan pack we've opened up. Um, Hornbreak. Appears means it ignores shields. Yes, there's shields in the game. It ignores shields. It deals 5 damage twice, so about 10 damage for 1 mana, which is pretty good. Um, so this is an interesting card. An X, that means deal 2 times the damage of any units. And that X is like... If, if this was 3 times 2, it would do 6 damage or something of that nature. Um, which is pretty good. Um, just like... It's... it's all right, I would say. And ascend a unit. Um, this ascend a unit. You, so you can send, uh, send a person or a creature up one level. Uh, you can even, what you can do is like, just below your pyre, you can send a, a creature up and a pyre will attack it, which is just hilarious. Um, but that, that doesn't necessarily mean enemies. You can do it with your own creatures as well. So if you feel like your, cre your main character is going to die, you can just ascend it and... But I think it will move it up and to the back of the floor. Um, so the, your sentient will be at the back. So I feel like direct damage is very nice since it does d deal 5 damage twice. This can be buffed. Um, I feel like let's go ahead and take this. Because it's a nice bypass. If anybody comes in with shields, we can bypass and just do that.